Hello and welcome back to AGDQ 2015. I'm your host Sky Bills. We have just uh, finished watching Blood Thunder's Bro Force, and coming up next we have Metal Slug Advance by Gyre. Real quick, can you hear me fine? Yeah, DK will be my commentator here. Yes, sir. Uh, I'll just yell really loud. Uh, let's see if we can get this so it doesn't completely tangle all the cords up. One of our awesome sponsors during AGTQ 2015 is the Humble Bundle. Check out the awesome Games Done Quick Quick Bundle on HumbleBundle.com. Pay what you want to for up to nine games, a Twitch Turbo subscription, a subscription to x -Split Premium, and exclusive merchandise, all while supporting Prevent Cancer Foundation. That's www.HumbleBundle.com. So what is exactly a GDQ for? This is all proceeds go towards the Prevent Cancer Foundation at preventcancer.org. The Prevent Cancer Foundation is the only nonprofit in the United States that solely focuses on cancer prevention and early detection. Each year, more than 1.6 million Americans alone are diagnosed with the disease, and more than half a million die from the disease. However, research shows that up to 60% of cases and more focus uh, cases and more than 50% of deaths are preventable with what we know now. The Prevent Cancer Foundation focuses their efforts in research, education, outreach, and advocacy with over 138 million invested over 29 years. The Prevent Cancer Foundation has funded more than 480 grants and fellowships at more than 150 different academic institutions and medical centers from across the country. Some of these grants have even been funded by money raised from Awesome Games Done Quick in the past. Another one of our great sponsors is Tiny Build. Tiny Build Games is an indie developer morphed into an indie publisher. They partner up with indies across the world to help their games as well as develop games themselves. Check them out at www.tinybuild.com and check out their game speedrunners available in the AGDQ 2015 Humble Bundle. We have a $5 donation from Solid Frog. DK, glad I set my alarm for 3 a.m. Good luck on the runs, sub 10.
Be sure to donate towards many great donation incentives, one of them including the Break the Camera Incentive from Wiz, a donation incentive for the Wiz runner SDFG to perform a glitch that breaks the camera in two specific levels, watch a rabbit forced onto a different place of existence. And right now, our current goal is $500, and we are $205 out of $500. Another great way to contribute to AGDQ is to buy t-shirts from the Yeti. The Yeti is a t-shirt site featuring an awesome new design every 24 hours for a low price. The Yeti has partnered with us for AGDQ 2015, offering an array of shirts with $3 from every unit sold going to the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Check out the collection at theyeti.com slash games done quick. Coming up next, we have Metal Slug Advance with Gyre as the speedrunner, followed by Contra with DK28 and the Mexican Runner. Don't forget as well, all Twitch subscriptions proceeds go 100% to PCF. Also, too, coming up later is um, Battletoads with uh, JC583 and the Mexican Runner. And congratulations, we have met our Warpless percent incentive. Uh, we have obtained $3,065 out of $3,000. And so look forward to both these runners playing through the entire game. We apologize for the technical difficulties. The staff has been woken up and they are on their way. So just sit tight and we will get to Metal Slug Advance as soon as possible. 
thank you again for donating and supporting AGDQ 2015. Yes, no, maybe. Cool. All right, so we're all set to go. Um, so this will be Metal Slug Advance in three, two, one, go. Open drill. Open drill, yep. Um, so this is Metal Slug Advance. Um, Metal Slug is a really well-established series of running gun shooters that dates back to the arcade days. And Advance is a completely original game. So it's not an arcade port, it's not a rehash of one of the original ones in the series. Um, but if you've played Metal Slug games before, you're going to recognize like, all the action that's going on here. And if you haven't played a Metal Slug game, um, expect a lot of action, a little bit of platforming, and why is my buttons not working? <laughs> uh, that's not good. Uh, let's see what's going on here. While we're waiting, we yeah. have a $25 donation from Kona Recon saying, Alarm, I just got off from work. Donating for the best arcade series of all time. working when I tested it. <laughs> so I'm just going to do a test here to see if the controller is working now. No, it was just the Game Boy Player Simmons changed the settings on it. <laughs> we should be good now. Grenades are very important in Metal Slug. A little bit important to have all of your buttons working if you want to be able to attack things. <laughs> yeah. You can do some low percent if you're not having grenades. <laughs> I mean. Okay, so let's try this again. You guys all set? Okay, three, two, one, go. So now for real, this is Metal Slug Advance. <laughs> Um, and if you haven't seen one of the games in the series, it is very heavy on action, 
a little bit of platforming, and a really heavy emphasis on fun and gameplay over realism. So if you need to see um, where you're going, you're going to have big glowing bullets, you're going to have all kinds of nice features in here. Uh, but most of all, it's going to feel like when things go wrong, it's mostly your fault. There is some RNG in the game, and I'll talk about um, a lot of the mechanics in here. From a speedrunning perspective, um, you'll see first of all that I'm jumping all over the place. Jumping is pretty common in Metal Slug games. It moves you forward a little bit, um, just a couple of pixels every time I jump. But over the course of a level, that's going to add up to a couple of seconds. And that adds a lot of danger to the run because you have a lot less control when you're in the air. Um, you're also more liable to put yourself into harm's way. Um, this screen's called the climb. It's one of the more tricky early game um, parts of the speedrun. And that's because of the way um, the game handles enemy spawns. Basically, there are positions that when they first scroll onto your camera view, it'll decide whether or not to put an enemy there. Um, but as a lag reduction measure, and lag was a kind of a big thing for um, early Metal Slug games. Uh, Metal Slug 2 in particular had a ton of slowdown. Um, they actually redid the game and re-released it as Metal Slug X, um, which fixed a lot of the problems. And I think they were nervous about something like that happening again for the relatively low-powered Game Boy Advance. Um, so what they did was, if it's starting to lag, um, what'll happen is it'll start disabling spawn points. And that means I can get a lot of randomness just from enemy patterns changing based on when I kill things, what activity is going on on the screen. Um, now we're gonna get to the first boss here. Um, Metal Slug bosses have a tradition of having a ton of hit points. So what I need to do for the speed run is figure out effective ways to kill them quickly. Um, this guy is trolling me by jumping around like an idiot. Um, he likes to do that quite a bit. Um, he also has an attack where he uses his main cannon shot. I want that to happen because it'll freeze him in place while he, while he fires three times. Um, but if he jumps around, you know, it's more like I need to lock onto him and kind of follow around the action. Um, now you guys donated it for Tira. Um, there's two character choices in this game, Walter and Tira. They're purely cosmetic, so that it's kind of just um, art style between the two of them. And um, Metal Slug players might be wondering, where are like, all my classic guys? Um, this game, plot-wise, is set a little bit in the future. So Walter and Tira are new recruits to the PF squad. Um, but under the covers, um, they really is the same crew as always. So Walter is Marco, um, with a different haircut, a little bit different coloration. Um, and Tira is Nadia from Metal Slug 4 with her ponytail chopped off. Um, I don't know why they chose Nadia. Uh, Ari and Theo have been the more popular females in the series, but since it is art, um, you know, it's kind of like the style choice. And I think they came out with some decent characters here. So DK, as a Metal Slug player, are you getting the sense this is the same game that you're used to? Yeah, definitely very similar. A lot of the same mechanics. Like when you were fighting the boss, I was waiting for you to do the, the Slug Crash, which is where you sacrifice the vehicle. And it does a lot of damage as opposed to just the regular attacks. Uh, Metal Slug as a whole, I always say, probably has more personality than just about any other game series. And that definitely still comes through, so. How would you say this uh, stacks up compared to the other games in the series? Um, I put it up there with uh, Metal Slug X and Metal Slug 3 as my favorites. Um, I think it's pretty accessible to new players. It's got a lot of elements that are not traditionally seen in a Metal Slug game. I'll talk about those a little bit. Um, probably first of all, you notice that there's a life bar. It's kind of replaced the arcade style where you've got um, credit feeding and just kind of unlimited amounts of play as long as you've got enough money with a system where um, you have a little bit more um, interesting things happening for the home console version. Um, and that's because um, they were trying to do from the ground up a game that was going to be um, interesting for somebody that was wanting to get some replay value out of it. So this was kind of an unplanned battle. Um, I'm supposed to have the slug coming in here to this boss. Uh, so this is going to take quite a bit longer than I want it. Um, actually, that's really bad. So one of the things that you'll see here for Metal Slug is um, if you die, um, then you're actually going to restart at the last checkpoint. In this case, it's going to be the boss battle. In traditional Metal Slug games, what would happen is you get there um, exactly where you left off. Um, but in this case, I have to redo the, the boss fight entirely. Um, so it's kind of a penalizing feature to make you um, get good at the game. 
Um, but it's also um, useful for um, interfacing with the uh, Metroidvania style elements. So one of the things they did for um, replayability was make it so that there is a card collecting aspect. And the card collection has a couple of different um, things that you can get out of it. There are our achievement cards um, for beating the bosses under certain time limits, um, beating parts of the mission. I'm going to collect the laser here. Um, unlike the other Metal Slug games, it's actually deterministic what weapons that you get in the bosses, um, which is one of the nice um, things where you're saving a little bit in RNG. Otherwise, these guys are RNG nightmares. Um, the first phase of this guy has um, a little bit more predictability, um, but the second phase, he likes to move around a lot like an idiot, um, so it's kind of hard to lock onto him. Um, but other aspects of the cards, um, there are secret items that you need to, to get um, just for decorative purposes. Um, and there's also power-ups. So you might have seen that when I was grabbing weapons, I actually have half as much ammo as I would in a normal Metal Slug game. So when I got the heavy machine gun, I only had 100 shots instead of 200. So while you have power-ups that increase your ammunition, really it's getting you back to parity with the other Metal Slug games. Um, is that the Allen replacement? That is Alan O'Neill Jr. So um, again, this is set a little bit in the future from the other Metal Slug games. Um, Alan O'Neill is one of the most fun battles in it. He's kind of a recurring villain in the series. I think he's more interesting than the end boss or most of the other guys in there. Um, and kind of the backstory of Alan O'Neill is, uh, even though he keeps dying, he's immortal because he always wants to go home and go back to his son. Well, that's his son in this game. And he happens to fight exactly like his, his father does. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to do the Alan O'Neill fight. It's in an optional area of the final mission. Um, and since this is an any percent run, um, I'm not going to be able to go all the way through there. Um, I guess I should explain what the difference is between any percent and 100 percent here. So um, in a 100 percent run, it's basically collecting all the cards. It's 100 cards that you go through. Um, so it's a really easy definition of what 100 percent means. And any percent is finishing the game as fast as possible. I'm only going to collect two cards throughout the run um, that are optional, one of which I got at the very beginning of the game, um, the shotgun clip to increase my shotgun ammo. I'll need that in mission four. And then there's also the heavy machine gun clip, which I got just now. Um, and I'll use that against the final boss. So this is probably a good time to plug the charity and tell us a little bit about what we're doing here. OK, thank you. Uh, we have a $25 donation from David F12, donating again for one of my favorite series of all time. Okay, hype! Here's hoping all of us together can help prevent cancer and give us all a very rosy outlook on life. We also have a $20 donation from Timzy. I lost my grandma to pancreatic cancer when I was 12. Thanks for being awesome. After that bro force run, I think it's pretty important to liberate the animals. $25 donation from Steve. Worth it to stay up till 4 a.m. for this run. One of my favorite games of all time. Good luck and keep going. So you what a, oh, go ahead. No, sorry. A $20 donation from the Bacon from Hell. Stanford TV brought me here. I hope I win the PS4. I love you all. So one of the things I was doing there with the purple paratroopers is actually um, influencing how they spawn based on the lag management. There's supposed to be nine in each of the waves, but the more you kill simultaneously, the more it's going on at the screen at the same time. And as I said, that'll cause enemies to despawn. So you can get between four and nine, depending on how quickly um, you deal with the first wave in there. Um, now this guy is based on a boss from Metal Slug 1. His gimmick is that he's below you, which is always a weak spot in Metal Slug games. It's very difficult to shoot down. Um, but if you bring the slug into the mission, you can really trash the boss. And he's one of the few ones that doesn't have um, randomness in how he moves around. He's random in how he attacks, um, but his movement pattern is fixed. I know this will also kind of give you the world map on this one. Does that have any particular function, or is that more just... That's part of the replay aspect. So in order to complete the game fully for 100%, you actually have to do some of the missions many times over. Um, and in fact, there is like unlocks where you get um, parts of the game that are locked off the first time that you go through the missions. You find secret items, and those let you open up um, later parts of the game. So this is where the game starts getting really difficult. Not only is it ramping up um, how hard it is, 
Um, but I've been skipping all those um, cards for the purposes of the speed run. So it's kind of assuming that I've got the power-ups, um, which is going to make it a lot trickier to get through here. And what I'm going to rely for most of the rest of the run is more on running and dodging things than on actually killing. Um, take the damage boost up to the third floor, um, which gives me a little bit of a jump off here. Notice there's a little bit of a difference between what you might think are the hitboxes of the game and where um, it's actually looking at things. Um, I'll take advantage of that quite a bit and kind of show it off um, throughout this level. Uh, but mostly what I'm trying to do is baby this shotgun that I got at the very beginning all the way through to the boss. Um, it's the most effective weapon. There is a flame shot, but it's about 15 seconds out of the way. Is flame as OP in this one as the rest of the series? Um, unfortunately, the flame clip increase is at the very end of Mission 5. Um, so it would be if you had enough ammunition, but you don't. This is one of the more trolling aspects of the game. Um, I kind of mentioned how enemy spawns have deactivation if there are no enemies. Like, there's supposed to be a tank there, but he decided not to show up today. Um, the way they code at mobile objects, these platforms I'm running on, those are also spawned in the game. So if there's lag at the wrong time, the floor will disappear, and I'll have a very bad day. So I needed 20 shotgun shots and 20 grenades for the kick kill, quick kill on the boss, but I also need luck to get him to do a certain attack. And unfortunately, you can't influence that, but we'll see if it uh, goes well or not. He basically can drop a missile on my head, or he can decide to swoop, and the swoop will take um, at least six seconds. This is the swoop. <laughs> And we'll finish him off because I dropped a couple grenades on the ground. Um, but if you have 20 and 20, you can kill him with exactly the ammunition that you got there. And I have to mash because there is actually the mission selection um, between each of these screens in here. Um, now the final mission. The final mission starts off with um, a couple branching paths. The first branching path is whether or not you survive the aerial combat section. I blow myself up intentionally to take me to this backup area. And it kind of looks like an auto-scroller, but every time I get shot, notice the screen scrolls slightly faster. Uh, so the technique down here is actually um, pretty counterintuitive. You want to get shot as much as possible. <laughs> um, you'd think that would be easy for a game like this, but it, it's tricky to manipulate the enemies to shoot you in a consistent way. Um, so I need to take exactly four going down there to get through as quick, the, the fastest way. Um, again, it doesn't look like you could sneak through there, but I tricked the missile to fire the wrong direction, and he's too slow to catch up. On this next screen, this is probably not what you want to do at home. <laughs> and I skipped that super grenade there, um, which is a tricky jump because these tanks right here have a shield. Normally you have to blast the shield before you can do damage to them, but the shotgun's piercing attack goes right through, so I can kill him in one hit. I was gonna say, it was nice to see Super Grenade again, but never mind. I'll get you some Super Grenades. <laughs> um, this is the final mission here, um, with a ton of branching paths through here. Um, obviously I'm gonna take the shortest one through, um, but there is all kinds of collectibles in here. There's the optional Alan O'Neill fight, um, and some of the paths give you more um, weapons to use against the final boss. What a troll from the left-hand side there. Um, so I'll go through in and kind of have the minimum, which is just coming through with your pistol and 10 grenades. So I'll have to be um, a little bit more careful about how I deal with them. Uh, for these two rooms, what I actually do is park myself on top of the exit trigger before it spawns. And when it activates, it sucks me out immediately. It saves a couple of frames. Um, there's another trick with those tanks. Um, you can actually poke your gun through their hitbox um, it doesn't hurt you if you get just at the right position, so I can actually shoot the back of him uh, without taking damage. It's my safety fish. And this guy is an RNG nightmare. Um, first of all, um, depending on where the platforms spawn and where I spawn on the screen, I'll get between three and five jumps. Um, and then there's these random robots. I'm hoping that they go at my crouching height because you fire the gun fastest when crouching. Wow, they are really trolling me today. Um, but they can be um, unhittable, like you saw in the first one. Or they could be at like a head height, which is kind of an intermediate comfortable one. Um, then it does this plasma ball attack. These plasma balls are completely random, so it's all improv doing this section. And it's no safe spots on the screen where you can still hit the boss. So that glowing red orb is the only thing that takes damage on there. So if you want to dodge, 
um, and you go around, um, then you'll be doing less DPS, which is never good for a speedrun. Um, the transition from the top to bottom, that is RNG as well for how long it takes. Um, these plasma lasers are RNG as well. It'll give you some pretty interesting patterns sometimes. Um, again, I want to stay in the middle as much as possible. I'll even take hits sometimes um, if it lets me avoid having to run around. Um, the time to drop these platforms down is random. That was actually a pretty good one. Um, I had a practice attempt earlier where it took 25 seconds to drop those down. Um, and then it repeats the cycle. And it's important that I don't um, put the boss into critical mode before he does um, the plasma balls again. He's got a much nastier phase once he goes into critical mode. Um, the robots go into insanity mode, um, where they move much faster, and he can do three robots instead of two. There's also what I call the blue ring of death attack. Um, we'll see if it comes down and does the blue ring of death here at the bottom. I might be able to take him out before then. Um, so get ready on time. It won't be when the boss dies, but I'll tell you exactly when it is. Um, and that was the final boss of Metal Slug Advance. So time is going to be in three, two, one, time. <laughs> Not bad for getting trolled by Mission 2. Um, the world record is 14.02. Not only does that require really good execution, but also all those RNG elements I talked about, like you have to get the quick kill on Mission 4, you have to get perfect RNG on Mission 5. Um, just like there's about a minute of difference from pure RNG on the bosses alone. Yeah, a perfect Metal Slug run is quite a sight. <laughs> um, and I do want to give a shout out to Mike Uyama. Uh, Mike is the main organizer of the GDQ events, and he's also a really big Metal Slug player. Um, I'd hope to have him on the couch today, but he's unable to join us. Um, his runs were really what got me into speedrunning Metal Slug games in the first place. He had a lot of very good times early on before people were really seriously doing this. Like, I was doing one credit clears of, like, Metal Slug X and Metal Slug 1. Um, but you do that, like, with baby strats. You crawl for it. You make sure that, you know, you're, you're going through as safe as possible. And Mike was the first person I saw that, you know, just, like, tore through the level. Um, DK, I don't know how you got started on Metal Slug games. Uh, a little bit the same, because always the running gun stuff, you know, with the Contra and everything like that. So watching Mike's Metal Slug reruns was definitely uh, inspirational, just like you said. Just caution to the wind yeah. and just go for it. So thank you, Mike, and I hope you're able to join us for a future Metal Slug. I'm sure we'll have more in the marathon. Um, and with that, thanks for watching, everyone. Thank you, and that was Gyre with Metal Slug Advance. Coming up next is DK28 and the Mexican runner speedrunning Contra. We're going to cut to a quick commercial break. We will be right back with more AGDQ 2015. Stay tuned.